Hey, FCF, we're continuing again with our journey, uh, critical core truths or core critical truths. I can't remember. I keep saying it differently, I think, every day. Uh, we're talking, though, primarily about spiritual growth. And uh, I, I, I want to get back to something that is a root of, of actual spiritual growth. If, if what I'm doing doesn't represent an authentic pursuit, okay, so, so, so let me rephrase that a little bit. One of the characteristics, one, one of the, the markings of someone that is on a true spiritual growth path, path is that they are consciously pursuant of Christ-like character development, okay? And, and they're, they're, not just, um, they're not just trying to please God. They're not just trying to merit favor with God. They're not just trying to appease God. They're not just trying to uh, show themselves to others that, you know, they're, they're a good Christian. They really, truly have seen something beautiful in the character of God, and they want so much to be like Him. And they are consciously pursuing Christ-like character development, and they pursue it as one of the primary passions in their life, and they pursue it until their last breath. Let, let me share a portion of Scripture with you from the, uh, the book of Philippians, chapter 3. And uh, we're going to start in verse 12. Now, the Apostle Paul, you know, he's, um, he's been a follower of Christ for over 25 years when he writes this. And so this is a guy with lots of experience. Philippians 3.12, he says, Not that I've already obtained all this or already have been made perfect. That word uh, perfect there in the Greek, it's teleos. It means mature or Christ-like. So Paul is saying, I'm not yet Christ-like, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. In other words, he knows that, that he was made by Christ and for Christ and meant to wear the image of Christ. But he says, man, I'm 25 years in this thing, and I am still pursuing this. The word he used for pursue there, it's dioko in the Greek. It is the word used for persecution. It is very intense. It's saying that I'm, I'm running after this fiercely. It's a goal of mine after 25 years to become just like Christ. All right, listen to what he says next. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Verse 14, I press on. There's that word dioko again. I, I persecute on. I press on toward the goal, the goal to become more like Christ, to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And then he says something interesting in verse 14. All of us who are mature, that's that word teleos again. <laughs> it is the word for Christ like perfection, but Paul is saying there are stages of perfection even before you reach the final stage of Christ, full Christ-like transformation. But he says, all of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And so here he is laying out for us, what is one of the marks of spiritual maturity? Well, it's obviously Christ-like character transformation, but it's also attitudinal. It is this, this attitude, it is this passion. It is this, this singular focus in life that I might be a butcher, baker, candlestick maker. I might be a husband. I might be a, an employee, an employer. I might be a father. But above all other things, I am this person that is pursuing Christ-like character development. I'm, I'm trying to use every opportunity that God, God's given me to serve Him, to make Him known to others and extend His kingdom. But I'm really fixated on becoming like Christ. It is this attitude of pursuit with a with a humble objective analysis of where we still fall short. Paul was 25 years in this thing and he, he's acknowledging, I'm not there yet. But he knew that his attitude was mature. It is the attitude of, of pursuing this Christ-like development that is so critical. Now, I was tempted to, um, to talk a little bit about some of the concrete steps, but I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna go too long if I do. Maybe I'll share uh, one, a couple other passages with you on this theme. Let, let me share you something, something with you from 1 Corinthians 5, 15. And this is a, an important component of spiritual growth and development. And it's the, the notion of perseverance. 1 Corinthians 15, it says, verse 2. The Apostle Paul speaking, he says, By this gospel, or this body of good news about God as he's revealed himself in Christ, that's the gospel, by this gospel you are saved if... Here's, here's the contingency. If you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, 
otherwise you have believed in vain. So, so Paul is saying, if this hasn't gripped you, if it has not become internalized, if it is not a dynamic force, dynamic motivational force in you, well, you've heard it, but it hasn't been allowed to do its work. Now, I'm going to show you another portion of Scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And um, verse 13, the Apostle Paul, once again, talking about how the Thessalonican Christians responded to God's Word. It says, We also thank God continually, continually because when you received the Word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the Word of men, but as it actually is the Word of God. And then listen to this next phrase. Which is at work in you, who believe. And that word work, it, it, we get our word energy from it. It's energeo. So he's saying the word of God is releasing energy in we who trust or believe. So here Paul is saying that when we let the word of God grip our heart, or let me rephrase it, when the word of God has gripped our heart, the, the uh, manifestation of that will be it starts to exude a, a motivational transforming effect on us. It becomes our governing frame of reality. We, we want to become like Christ. We are conscientious of his kingdom. We're conscious of his uh, presence with us, whether we're at work, whether we're home, wherever we're at, and, and we want uh, everywhere, every way that we can to become more like him. All right, I, I'm, I'm going to take, take this next week a little further. We're going to get into a couple more practical aspects of this, this growth. And I know that for some of you this is probably review, but I want to suggest that you take some time thinking about the key role that motivation plays because it's easy for us to slip into uh, less than pure motives. Remember, the motives always have to be, I, I, I love what I see in God, in Christ, and I want to be like that, as opposed to, well, I'm, I'm doing what's obligatory or I'm doing what I think God wants me to do so that he'll favor me, bless me, or I'm trying to merit um, or, or view myself uh, compared to others as being a Christian. It's, spiritual growth is never about that. And spiritual growth is not about those practices. Those practices are means to growth, but they are not necessarily proof of growth. Proof of growth is transform Christ-like character development. All right. See you next week.